Out of all the tropes in popular media, none has a bigger guilty pleasure to me than the tournament arc, a single elimination style where one protagonist and friends take on a rogues gallery of opponents and obstacles, all for the sake of glory, power, and often their own lives. In Battle Shonen, it's perhaps the most fun moments in the show, where you get to see big finishing moves, where you see the underdog take down the big bad guy, and where the minor characters get their uninterrupted time in the spotlight. Welcome to my new analysis series, The Art of the Tournament Arc. In this series, we'll be looking at just a small sample of the hundreds of anime with battle tournament arcs, and evaluate them based on a series of, of criteria that I will address shortly. <laughs> But first, let's look at the tournament arc as a writing trope, and the pros and cons of having one in your particular story. In anime, tournament arcs are one of the biggest tropes, with several shows being nothing but tournament arcs of one form or another, yet there are some legitimate positives to writing a tournament arc in your particular story. Well, for starters, it gives the writer a chance to introduce a lot of unique characters in a short amount of time. In these tournament arcs, if the rival is not already established or working against the protagonist, they will most likely be introduced here and usually have goals that work opposite or directly against the protagonist and their friends. While the most common form of tournament is a single elimination fighting tournament, any one-on-one -on -one competition can be made into a tournament from food to card games to spinning tops. To put it in the most simplest terms, a tournament arc is just simply a competition of all things. It is a test of the protagonist's skill against a roster of challenges and obstacles. A tournament arc also allows the writer to develop secondary characters without having to drastically change the arc of the story. In their one or two fights, we get to see these otherwise minor characters in a new light but we could otherwise just you see nowhere else. A great example of this is the Shikamaru fight and the Chunin exams. Before this fight, Shikamaru was given minimal character development and attention. He just seemed like the stereotypical, athpathetic slacker type. And, you know, when it came time for him to fight in this tournament, in the second round, everyone in the crowd reinforced this sentiment by booing and jeering at him. However, Shikamaru demonstrated his ability to plan three steps ahead of his opponent, who had superior fire firepower against him. It manages to demonstrate his ability to be a brilliant tactician, and in fact is the only one in the main tournament that comes out as an actual Chunin. I mean, you know, granted half the village at that point was being attacked, but you know, that, that was, that's another point. That's another point entirely. The Chunin exams nonetheless demonstrates all the qualities I'm looking for in a great tournament arc. One, the reason for the tournament. Perhaps one of the biggest pitfalls of the, of the tournament arc is you know, not having a good reason to have one. If there's already an overarching plot that has not been resolved yet, a tournament can feel as though it's just filler or a general waste of the audience time with boring, generic fights. A tournament arc works when it has a good foundation. It will generally lead to other positive factors. If there's no reason for a tournament to take place, why should the fights matter? If there's no reason to fight, will the fights even be good, and will the characters introduced in them be worth remembering? Apart from a, having a good reason for a tournament arc, what are the character what the character's there for and the potential for character growth is also an important factor. The tournament arc takes a lot of time, perhaps a whole season in some instances, and during that time we expect our main characters to grow in ability and character, preferably both. But like the motivation for the tournament itself, if the character doesn't change much during their time, was it really worth it to have them in a season-long brawl? Looking at our Shikamaru example from the Chunin exams, after his fight, something changes within him. As soon after the fight, even though he technically lost his match, he becomes a Chunin. He does go on to, uh, you know, lead a squad to retrieve Sasuke from Orochimaru and his thugs, and so on and so forth, but really all it took to start that change within his character was to demonstrate his abilities. While the other characters watching his match could comment on his abilities, what really stood out was it took him demonstrating these abilities to actualize them and for him to progress as a character. Ask yourself this, would Shikamaru be as good of a character if he had never been introduced in the Chunin exams? Would his rele revelation to be a master level tactician seem out of place if he was never really given the chance to demonstrate his skills? On that point, I'd argue, Yes, it would seem out of place. 
For a character to grow in a battle shonen, they need to be given the opportunity to show the audience that they can do this thing, and how they do fight. Which leads me to my third criteria, the fight itself. This is what separates the greats from the fillers, the actual fight. You see, there are a lot more to there's a lot more to a fight than just a series of punches and kicks and maybe a super special awesome move at the end to bring it all home. A truly great tournament facilitates the kind of fight that will lead to the protagonist and company to become more rounded characters, to use what they've learned to progress and become either stronger to face bigger challenges or understand themselves more. And it's also here where most tournament arcs fail, because more often than not, it just comes down to the biggest cliches in writing. I fight for my friends. Tournament arcs might be one of my biggest guilty pleasures when it comes to tropes and anime, but the cliche motivation of, I fight for my friends, just drives me up a fucking wall. Uttering that phrase, or something similar to that effect, is really grounds for dismissing a protagonist or character outright. It only hurts the show in the end, really. And let me clarify what I mean by I fight for my friends, because it doesn't simply mean the general mentality of someone in my life is precious and therefore I must fight for them. It's a lot stupider than that. Generally, a protagonist with this kind of motivation is treated by the author or showrunner to be some sort of holier-than-thou Mary Sue type of character who is the sole reason for anything to get done in the show. And the minor characters that follow are just the cheer squad to help them along, and really don't do anything else. So protagonists like this, you know, from Ichigo to Bleach, and and Luffy from One Piece, Kirito from SAO, these these are protagonists to generally avoid uh, when writing your your, uh, tournament arc, uh, since they're not really prone to grow in anything except power level. Uh, Granted, the best scenes in a battle shounen are usually in these tournaments, But what makes them more memorable are the reasons these characters have to fight. And perhaps the best example of this in recent years is in My Hero Academia. The sports festival will get its own video later on in the series. But for now, I kind of want to look at a fight between Midoriya and Todoroki. This fight is arguably the best one in the tournament. Other YouTubers and fans alike, you know, have agreed that this fight is in fact the climax of the sports festival, and for good reason. The fight between Midoriya and Todoroki demonstrates a clash of ideals. Rather than trading blows, even though, you know, it ends that way, during the fight, the main obstacle, the question that must be answered is, why is Todoroki fighting with only his ice rather than both his fire and ice? The fight is used as a framing device to have this question answered, as only using his ice powers is not enough to finish Midoriya outright. Throughout the season, we've kind of gotten these clues, these little flashbacks that about uh, Todoroki's past and his relationship with his father as being the root cause of his unwillingness to use his fire. The two characters attack this conflict with Midoriya practically begging Todoroki to go all out. You know, his opponent. At this moment, the protagonist wants his opponent to be better than him and win. And this is what makes Midoriya stand out as a protagonist for me. Again, this will be looked at in a much deeper light once we get to the UA Sport Festival uh, in a a separate video, but what My Hero Academia does best, among other things, is to give their characters unique ways of developing and overcoming obstacles. Both the Chunin Exam and the Sports Festival get high marks in all three areas of a great arc. In both, we see great character development, within the fights themselves, the fight choreography itself, and a reason for the tournament to take place. That makes sense within the greater plot. The other entries in these series will be graded on a scale of 1 to 5 in each of these categories, and we'll be doing a deep dive into a few of the fights and breaking them down frame by frame. While we talk about, well, we talked about the tuning exams in the UA Sports Festival, the first entry actually in this series, surprisingly, isn't even an anime. It will be Ruby Season 3's tournament arc. Like before, I'll be grading this next tournament, and in fact all tournaments in this series on the same scale, and at the end, we'll be taking a stack at them to compare to see which of these is the best based on these criteria. I think it's important right here to note that no matter, at the end of the day, no matter how well I may support my arguments or present my viewpoints, this is just that, a viewpoint an opinion. I may be, you know, stating things as if they were fact, but I assure you, it is just part of the making a persuasive essay. 
Well, it took some doing, but uh, I managed to get this video out before October. With Halloween around the corner, this next month will be devoted to narrating scary stories. If you liked what you saw here, and would like to support my channel, I do have a Patreon that you can contribute to. It'll be the first link down in the description. And as always, I do appreciate any sort of feedback or comments down in below. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys in the Virtual Plaza. Wow.